Here's a video I'm going to get in trouble for, but at least this video has to do with Matt Dillahunty. <laughs> um, his original statement that I took exception to was that one either believes in God or one does not. Um, when I originally sort of challenged him on that, although I didn't really challenge him, I challenged a video that was about a year old at the time. Um, a lot of people came to his defense, and in sort of, not really his defense, but just sort of saying, look, if you had to deal with what he had to deal with, i.e. Um, the evangelical Christian types that he has to deal with in Texas, you might be a little bit frustrated and irritated by the kind of constant uh, interference or at least irritation this might cause somebody of a free-thinking or atheistic bent. And that's legitimate, if you ask me. Um, and that's why I don't really want to... You know, I never really made any attempt to seriously take the guy on. I don't think he even knows that I exist anyway. So, so you know, I don't think that he would notice if I attempted to actually challenge him. But I don't really have an issue with what he's doing. Um, my objection is more or less sort of a more uh, categorical one in terms of anyone attempting to do what he's trying to do. He's trying to, in my opinion, or it looks to me as though he is trying to reduce reality to a set of formulae. Um, that once we discover the proper formula, we can then say that anything outside of that is rubbish. Now that's kind of a, that's kind of a caricature of his position. Um, but I think that there's some truth in that. Um, if I had to deal with people that were constantly bugging me and they were actually trying to pass laws or enforce morality or something like that in my life, I think I might be a little bit intolerant of them too. You know, Geert Wilders is, uh, we don't want to tolerate the intolerant anymore. And that, that might sound like just a catchy political phrase, but it actually, it, it kind of makes sense. Um, but, you know, again, I'm in Canada. We've got the religious right up here. But I think that it's fair to say that in the Canadian view of things, um, the Canadian public tolerates them. <laughs> and they seem to know this, that the obligation is on the evangelicals to, I don't know, behave. <laughs> uh, otherwise, there will be trouble, which is, of course, why the evangelicals are in Texas now anyway, because the English at whatever point decided that the evangelicals couldn't behave, so they were sent to the colonies. <laughs> um, which, of course, brings me back to the point that I was going to make. Um, this is the bit that's going to get me into trouble, because I'm going to bring ethnicity into it. Now, I come from the Irish Catholic background, okay? I'm always fond of pointing that out, and I think that it's affected my character, uh, my, my upbringing and my background has affected my character in ways that I don't really see, I don't notice anymore. Now, your stereotypical Irish Catholic from the South is always evasive. Evasive to the point of being frustrating, even infuriating. Um, you know, some people have said that's simply a function of being an occupied country for so long. You just, whenever the police or anyone who you suspect have any kind of um, connection to the establishment is asked any question about anything, you're not really sure if you should answer that or how you should answer it. Well, you know, me wits, they're not all that they might be. I don't really know if I've got much of an opinion on the subject. I'm just a simple man, you see. Tis the drink, you know. It's done me, it's done me brain some terrible damage. Sure it has. And it's entirely possible that the guy knows exactly the answer to the question that, say, the local policeman has asked him, but he doesn't want to answer it because he's not quite sure what's going to become of the information that he gives to the policeman. Uh, maybe he doesn't even drink. Uh, maybe the whiskey hasn't addled his brains. But he just wants to sort of say, look, I'm not talking to you. And he obfuscates and evades, but without actually challenging anybody. It's the old um, Spanish colonial uh, phrase that they, they always sort of used against the occupying Spaniards. I don't know how it goes in Spanish, but in English it's I obey, but I don't comply. I'm not challenging your right to, you know, push me around or whatever. But I'm not necessarily going to make it easy on you to do so. And, but I won't challenge you overtly. I'll just play stupid or whatever. Evade. The stereotypical Southern Irish is 
the only sort of people that I know of who are able to have simultaneously have a reputation for cleverness and stupidity. <laughs> uh, you know, just crazy like a fox, I guess. Now, in the north, of course, Northern Ireland, the Ulstermen, are known for being blunt, straightforward, and practical to the point of being abrasive about it. Don't give me none of that rubbish about thinking about how many fucking angels dance on the head of a pen. You know, that kind of thing. Um... Religious or not, by the way, it's not just a Protestant thing. It's not just an evangelical thing. It's just things are the way they are and quit fooling around with reality. Um, it's interesting that Ireland has these two polarities in it, in the same country. Um, and, and again, these are stereotypes of the Northern and the Southern Irish, by the way. Uh, and I apologize if these are offensive to anybody. I don't mean them to be. But this isn't really the offensive bit. <laughs> the offensive bit is is that the um, the Texan attitude is remarkably similar to the Northern Irish. Um, the stereotypical Texan attitude. Don't give me no goddamn foolishness about your highfalutin ideas. I just want to drill for oil and make money and build skyscrapers. You know, that kind of thing. You know, just everything is very straightforward and anything else is just foolishness, frivolity. Kind of like the, you know, again, the stereotypical Ulster Protestant who, you know, in, in, in his own way is kind of an admirable character. Both Texans and Ulstermen make absolutely superb soldiers for that very reason. Practical bent of mind, you've got the best soldier you can imagine. Um, <clears throat> you want to get the job done, you get a Texan to do it. It will get done, and it'll get done under budget and, uh, you know, in timetable. But the problem is, of course, it breeds a mind, or it breeds an attitude that the world is black and white. There's things that are important, and everything else is foolishness. Um, whereas, you know, again, the, the sort of attitude I'm comfortable in is, well, maybe yes, maybe no, I'm not quite sure, let me think about this a bit, I'll get back to you tomorrow, whatever. Um, now, it looks to me as though Mr. Dillahunty has kind of projected a bit. Now, I, I've admitted that in this video I'm projecting, right? and I'm probably projecting in all of my videos. Um, but in his video, or in his way of arguing his point, he seems to just say that religion is an unnecessary frivolity, and we all know what reality is, and anything else is just foolishness, and quit fooling around. That's, you know, that's your sort of stereotypical Texan attitude. Um, when you take the hard logic point of view, when you take the hard reason point of view, the dialectic point of view, the scientist point of view, uh, scientism, scientist point of view, that kind of thing, it's the same kind of categorical refusal um, to go into anything that is just foolishness. Uh, or foolishness. Um, you, you, in your mind, it's quite clear where frivolity starts and practicality ends and vice versa. Um, now, okay, what role does culture have in atheism? I, I would assume it has a very large role. Um, I'm a product of my culture, whether I like it or not, and so is Matt Dillahunty. And again, it wasn't me that brought up this bit about, look, he's in Texas, this is what he has to deal with. Uh, and, and I'll be first to admit he has a point there, or people who say that have a point. But if we're going to pursue that line of thinking, we'll have to pursue it uh, in both directions. We'll have to say, all right, if he gets a let because he has to deal with the evangelicals of Texas, then I want him to answer for his own Texan-ness. Um, now the interesting or the cute part about all this, I haven't even researched to see if whether uh, see if Mr. Dillahunty is a native-born Texan. I rather suspect I'm going to get my comeuppance in this video, but uh, anyone who knows me knows that I kind of like my comeuppances. 